All right, pregame thoughts, Padres and the Giants. Obviously, the Padres trying to rebound from the painful ending of last night's game. But they've got a Giants team that is under 500. Bob Melvin, obviously, as the skipper, returns to Petco Park. 640 first pitch, Padres 80 and 62. The Giants 69 and 72, fourth place in the NL West. They're not going to make the playoffs this year. The Padres, they're in a good spot. They have the first wild card spot, although the gap is not that big between the first wild card spot and not making the postseason. It's three or four games. So Padres are going to have to keep playing good baseball, but I like their chances going into this series with the pitching matchups with Michael King and Dewan Cease and Joe Musgrove uh, tonight. It is an Apple TV plus game. The only question though, is after those starters, what is the bullpen going to look like? Because as some have probably seen already, on the bullpen usage chart that I posted on social media earlier this afternoon, the Padres three guys, ASS, Adam, Scott, and Suarez, they're probably not going to pitch today and they may not pitch tomorrow either because they all three of them have gone four of the last five days. Robert Suarez has thrown, let's see, what is that? He had 19 pitches on the fourth, 26 pitches last night. That's a lot of pitches for two days. And obviously, that was some stress that was on his arm last night because of the situation. And then it was bases loaded. And so it's not like it was some, Oh, there's nobody on when I'm throwing these pitches. Um, so I, I wouldn't be surprised to see Suarez not pitch the first couple of games in this series. What matters the most is getting him back. Right. You know, Tanner Scott can close games if you need it. I'm not saying you boot Robert Suarez from the closer role, but just to keep him healthy, probably don't pitch him four out of the last five days. Don't pitch him that much in another five day stretch this season. Because you're, unless, you know, the playoffs is on the line. But what needs to be the most important is Robert Swords' health and getting him back to being really good and the command. And same thing with all these, these high leverage relievers. And the good thing is that there is depth in this Padres bullpen. So you say, well, who could the Padres go to? They could go to Jeremiah Estrada. He threw two pitches last night, although this would be his third day in a row. But it's not a it's not as big of a workload as those other three guys. You could go to Adrian Morahone. He had the day off yesterday. Brian Hoeing has not pitched in a while, at least five days since the last time that he has pitched. Yuki Matsui should be available. Alec Jacob has not pitched, I don't think, uh, since being called up. or It's been at least five days. Juani Peralta's had a day off. So other than those three guys, everyone else should be available. And so let's say the Padres can get six out of, six innings out of Michael King tonight. I would probably go with Hoeing. Maybe you get a couple of innings out of him, but you go Hoeing, Estrada, and more Hone. Like, I'm, I'm fine with that. Alec Jacob, he's got some nasty stuff. So, I mean... I'm not sitting here. I've seen some people on social media not feeling too great about today with the whole bullpen situation, and I understand it a little bit. But with the depth that they have and someone that's been watching this team pretty much every game this season, I'm confident with these other options. There's other teams in baseball. Their top three relievers aren't available. Yeah, that bullpen's going to crumble. And it might tonight, but I don't have the feeling like, oh, crap, here we go. Doesn't matter what the starter does, the bullpen's just going to blow it. I don't feel that way. It would be nice to get seven innings out of Michael King, but even if he gets six, you get six quality innings out of him. The offense shows up tonight against a guy that I had never heard of going into tonight. He has a seven four five ERA. The offense shows up, they can still win this game. And then the pitching matchup tomorrow: Logan Webb against Dylan Cease, and then Musgrove on Sunday. Who knows what's going to happen tomorrow, right? Facing Logan Webb, so. Getting this win is important. And then Sunday, obviously, with Joe on the mound. Um, Padres lineup, Arises DHing, Tatis is in right, Profar's in left, Manny's at third, Crony's at first, Bogart's at second, Merrill is in center, Higgy is catching, and then Mason McCoy is at shortstop. The last update that I heard about Ha-Sung Kim was that he is fielding and throwing over to first base. So there's progress there. Um, we'll see if he comes back. Is it going to be the Seattle series? Those two games there. We'll see when he comes back. Um, but there's still talent above that to get the job done. Um, I think the 
the reaction to this lineup, if there is going to be one, it's probably still that why is Merrill hitting seventh? And I would say because, man, it's working. And Schilt is someone that believes in his guys. And he likes to have a consistent lineup. He's not someone, at least from the eye test, from memory this year, he's not jumbling around the order all the time trying to do that. Like, no. No, it's different from last year because this year it's been working. Where last year, if it's not working, you know, Bob Melvin was probably searching a little bit. But Schilt likes to keep it consistent. Guys can walk into the ballpark. They know where they're going to be. They're, they know their role. Um, and with Crony, like, yeah, of course you can have the argument. Yeah, we should have Jackson Merrill hitting above Jake Cronenworth. We maybe just swap those guys. And I get that. But Jackson Merrill in the seven spot, there's no break in this lineup. Because you have... I mean, you could say like the bottom two, but I mean, Higgy can get you too. And McCoy can lay down a bunt to get a guy over. Like there, there's just no really like actual break. Arise, Tatis, Profar, Manny, obviously that says for itself. Crony can get you. And then you got Bogarts and you've got the rookie of the year hitting seventh. That's a tiring lineup right there. So if they keep winning games, I'm fine with it. If they don't, and crony, you know, really struggles, then we can have a conversation. But then wouldn't Donovan Solano enter that conversation a little bit as well? Right? So I'm fine with it. Um, I'm just looking at those names in that lineup. Merrill's still doing damage. He's still impacting this team in that seven spot. So, yeah, I'm fine with it. Underdog Fantasy, by the way, today, they've got the special pick, the gimme pick. Half total yards, Jalen Hurts. You have less than two and a half hours to get that one in at this time of this recording. Go higher on that. That's an easy win. And then for the Padres today, there is some or there are some options. Michael King, seven strikeouts, higher or lower. 17 and a half pitching outs. You could go higher on that. Uh, Let's see. Half burst inning hits allowed. I would go lower on that. That's my recommendation for today. Tatis, there's plenty of options there with him. One and a half total bases. You could go higher, half run scored, higher, lower. There's a lot. Half doubles, half first inning runs, one and a half hits, runs, RBIs in the first three innings, one and a half total bases, half RBI, one and a half hits, half first inning hit. And this is for a lot of guys. Manny, Bogarts, Arise, Crony. Mason McCoy even has them, Higgy, Profar, so Merrill. So use that to your advantage. Again, Underdog Fantasy all this week. They've got specials. I'm seeing here 10% bonus on your next deposit, and I'm someone that already has Underdog, so that's for existing users. For new users, obviously click that link in the description. Use code TALKINGFRIERS, and you will get to claim a special pick. You will get a 50% deposit match up to $1,000. So please, please use that to your advantage. And we'll see what happens tonight. Padres, Giants, game one of this series. I'm happy to see Bo Mel in town because he's got a losing record and the Padres are in a good spot and he is not. 